so basically thinking about the role of HPV testing in screening so how did this come by basically we should understand HPV is behind the main uh, pathogen behind the uh, development of pre-invasive and invasive cervical cancers it uh, contributes nearly more than 99 percent of all in, uh, cervical cancers in some way or the other and it, that is why this cervical cancer becomes uh, a cancer that can be preventable by a proper vaccination strategy so we have various you have more than 200 types of HPV viruses and of which you have the low risk and the high risk vi viruses low risk types are actually they are based on their um, the the genome configuration that they are divided into various types and the low risks are actually associated with benign lesions like your um, uh, genital warts so what we are more uh, bothered about would be the high risk types where you have the HPV infection and once that infection does not get cleared out from your body by via the, your immune mechanisms once the infection persists if the infection is of these high risk types then you have a risk of development of pre-invasive cancers and then the final cancer lesions so you're more worried about the high risk types so high risk types basically you should be aware of these numbers the uh, easier to remember ones would be the HPV 16 and HPV 18. HPV 16 be the most common um, type of the high risk HPVs that are present in these abnormal lesions and also HPV 18. HPV 18 has got more specificity towards the development of adenocarcinoma but as you all know the most common histology in cervical cancer is the squamous cell carcinoma and that is again associated with HPV 16 both of them both HPV 16 and 18 uh, contribute to both SCZs and adenocarcinomas but then HPV 18 has a more predilection for development of adenocarcinoma that's what I meant along with that the other numbers that you should be aware of would be the 16 18 31 33 45 52 and 56 why should we be aware of these because these are all the uh, HPV uh, virus types that are actually tackled in your vaccines especially the non-avalent vaccine that is there are nine strains against which that particular vaccine acts the nine strains includes two low risks that is six and eleven these are the most common low risk varieties and the high risk variants being 16 18 31 33 45 52 and 56 so seven plus two nine so that is these are the uh, hpv types against which your non-avalent that is a nine valent hpv vaccine acts so basically they are all belonging to the family of uh, papilloviridae that is the human papilloma virus and you should be aware this is a double stranded DNA virus and that DNA is actually non enveloped but then that entire virus is actually covered by a structure known as the capsid so it has got an icosahedral capsid so that is what you see here this appearance of the virus is due to the capsid. So the icosahedral capsid is again composed of both L1 and L2 uh, structural proteins. So it is against, so the major one is L1 and the minor protein being L2, which the L2 gives the, uh, the subtype differences to the capsid surface, whereas L1 is the major capsid protein. So it is actually the L1 which is actually utilized in the production of vaccines also. So we'll come to that later. So they are all both tissue specific and they are more, uh, predisposed to affecting the cutaneous and the mucosal epithelium. So again the International Association in the Research Against Cancer so you have they have actually defined 12 high risk types and uh, depending upon the carcinogenicity as we said earlier these are the main uh, major types and again they have added uh, additionals like 68 and 73 uh, types also to the carcinogens. So uh, not only cervical cancer the HPV also is the uh, causative factor for many other cancers too. So you have nearly 100% of cervical cancers caused by HPV. As you can, you should be remembering um, leash that is uh, structures that have a mucocutaneous junction. They are more predisposed to the infection by HPV and the uh, cancers caused by them. So along with cervix, you have the gynecological cancers, vaginal cancers, and vulval cancer. Uh, so the vaginal cancers around 70% of vaginal cancers is due to HPV and in vulval cancers you have many other 
causes for development of vulval cancers which are not related to HPV that we will be discussing later as we discuss the vulval cancers. So maybe not to the extent of uh, causing cervical cancer but still 43% of the uh, vulval cancers are due to HPV. Then regarding cancers you have anal cancers again because of its mucocutaneous junction propensity again around 80% of anal cancers 50% of penile cancers so that is again the role in males in preventing the HPV viruses again for your head and neck cancers especially the oropharyngeal cancers a wide range about 13% to 58% of oropharyngeal cancers can also be caused by HPV and then almost all of your benign genital warts are also due to HPV. So you should be aware that it's not only the cervical cancer that is caused by HPV, there are other cancers but the, uh, uh, the maximum association is actually with cervical cancer.